1st of October 1974. Mangi judu 1st October ben fanciweri October 1974. And please may we have your address? Pangadeka. I live in Bijilo. Mangi deka Bijilo. Can you ta kindly tell this commission about your educational background? Dinga muna wa commission mina sa jar jar ci sa walli njanga. To start with I was born and raised in the Gambia. Uh, I attended mangi, sorry I forgot. Mangi judo Gambia yarofi. I attended um, primary school in the Gambia Methodist, Methodist Primary School. Mangi dore nak suma njanga Methodist Primary School and attended high school in the Gambia St. Joseph's High School. Ma daldi dem nak St. Joseph High School fi ci rewi Gambia. Between 1987 and 1992. Ci digante 1987 ak 1992. And then I attended sixth form again in the Gambia, St. Augustine's High School. Ma def nak suma sixth form fi ci Gambia, St. Augustine's High School. Between 1992 and 1994. Digante 1992 be 1994. And again, after I passed my A-levels exam, and I gained admissions to university. I attended the uh, University of Hull in East Yorkshire, United Kingdom. Uh, United Kingdom, so University of Hull. I studied law. I obtained my LLB, my bachelor's in law. I am not suma makama bachelor's in law. In 1997. Atum 1997. And I continue to do my master's in law. Ma continue di yoku suma kam kam di chima makama master's silo. I obtain my master's in international business law. Ma amnak suma master's si international business law. In the year 1998. Atum 1998. I attended the University of Wales Cardiff. Ma dem nak si University of Wales Cardiff. Where I studied for the bar vocational course in 1999. I was called to the bar of England and Wales. by England and Wales through the Honorable Society of Lincoln's Inn. In October 2000. atum 2000 October. I returned to the Gambia. Madelsuat Gambia. And I sought employment with the Attorney General's Chambers. I in October. I was called to the Gambia. Afterwards, I was formally appointed a state council. Mujeki nak mana keluar ayah ingurgi? Missing ate. Yeah. Can you tell us the year when you were called to the Gambian bar? Was it 2000? It was in November. I cannot remember the date. Ah, uti where in November lah nak wajah kamu besmi. During that period as well, I was also appointed the focal point for UNICEF. And I was responsible. You may continue. I was responsible for the implementation of UNICEF Government of the Gambia Country Program of Cooperation. As it relates to the promotion on the rights, promotion of the rights of the child. I was also head and coordinator of the child rights unit during that time. 
and uh, because uh, as a result we implemented this program and uh, enacted laws relating to the rights of the child ci jamono bobu nak ci lañ nek di doxal nak tedelin yoyu ak itamen nak saxal nak ben loi bo xamne mu ngi jëm ci wali digeral lu jëm this act also established the in the children's court li bobu itamen nak mo nek loi bi nga xamne mo taxawal atk ay court yi xale yi Um, we conducted a number of trainings on the rights of the child for magistrates lawyers def nañ ay njang yu bari yo xamne mu ngi aju ci wali magistrate yi ak lawyer yi kadis kadis ak kadis and media practitioners ak ñi nga xamne ñoy yaxantu ci wali lawyer ci wali tasam xibar because of my work with child rights unit the dpp would own, would assign me gender based violence cases and child rights related cases related to children who have been raped or indecently assaulted waaw nga xamne ni nak ci ma liggey ci buntu bobu nga xamne ñu ngi doxna ci biir yelle fi xale yi taxna be ki di dpp say bu ne rek daf ma de sas tefar yi nga xamne ni mu ngi aju ci wali daanu ci kaw xale yi jigen yi le ak lepp lo xamne dal moy seen biir toroxal so in 2000 yes would it be correct to say that you were very instrumental in the implementation and enactment of the children's act 2005 mon dinañ mu na wax ne amna taxawayu degeer yo xamne defon nga ko ci biñu taxawal loi yi nga xamne modi argune te jeffon ko 2005 yes i coordinated the process but the drafting was done by the parliamentary council ma taxaw ni nga xamne non lañ ko don doxale nak way nak ci lirine bi ak ni mu taxawé moy council be ko taxawal and uh, we also supported the minister when he was moving the bill in parliament tay tay men nak taxaw won nañ minister bi jamono bi nga xamé mu ngi doon agalé nak loi bobu ci kanam negi député yi we also drafted the trafficking in persons bill tay tay men ñoo bindi loi bi nga xamné mu ngi jëm ci walli jël nit diko jallalé fenen yes and many others but these are just a few i can come up with ak yenen li nak moy new yi nga xamné ni man na koy fatali so in 2004 i was transferred to the drafting division ci atum 2004 ci lañ ma daldi toxal nak ci buntu bi nga xamne fa lañu bindé mbir loi yi as well in the criminal division i was state council and then promoted to senior state council wa yokalon nañ ma maqama nak ci jamono bi nga xamne loi yi rew rew mi la nguur gi la ñu yok ma defa ma nak kenn ci ñi gëna koy tamé ci loi yi nguur gi So in 2004 I was transferred to the drafting division. Ci atum 2004 nak ñu toxal ma ci buntu bi wa bind nak lu dem ci wali loi. And I was trained on legislative drafting. E ñu jangal ma itamen lu aju ci wali bindam loi ay rew mi. And I worked under the parliamentary council at the time. Ma liggey nak ci parliamentary council bi ci waxtu wo. where i was responsible for drafting bills and subsidiary legislations wo xamne ni rek ño gaddu nañ nak lu jëm ci walli bind ay loi ak yeneen yi nga xamne ni doxal ni ci aju la provided advice to parliamentary subcommittees and uh, parliaments during the debate of bills de tamen di yedd nak committee way tanef yoy nga xamne ni seen biri dagante lu aju nak ci biri loi yoyu I stayed on in the drafting division until 2007. Ma nek fa nak ci buntu bobu di bind wali loi be atum 2007. In August to be precise. Eh ci wali ci bir August ci ngina leral. Then I moved I resigned and I moved to the Guarantee Trust Bank. Eh ci la baye liggey bi na daldi liggeyal Guarantee Trust Bank. Was there any particular reason why you resigned and moved on? Ndax amon na dara lu wara lon nak ba ta nga resign non dem liggey fenen. Not really. I just had my babies i had twins and i needed to be closer to home uh, do it da mo jamono joju na dama am ay sikh te tamen bugon na le ne gëna jégué so i worked with the guarantee trust bank as the company secretary and head of legal and corporate affairs eh ma liggé nak ci bank bi nak nga xamné ni ma jité tamen seen bankas bo nga xamné ni mu nga aju seen walli doxalé ni loi bank bi I was appointed for such as a manager and promoted to senior manager the following year. Sanjel ben nak ñaj ma defon nak manager gannaaw lool ñu yokalaan ma maqama def ma senior manager ci benen admi. I served until 2009 August. Eh ma nek fa nak bewéri August atum 2009 and I resigned and I joined the bench. Eh ci la baye nak daldi dem liggey ci bench bi as a judge. Eh nek nak at kat I was appointed as judge in August 2009. Ñu daldi ma tan def ma atté kat bu mag ci atté koy code yu magi fofu in the high court. Eh ci code bu mag bi ci bañ high court bi. And it's correct to say that at this time you had 9 years standing at the bar. Yes. Bon mu ne ñu wax na amna juroom ñent at ya ngi nek lawyer. 
Can you tell the commission who was the chief justice at that time of your appointment? At that time, Justice Agim, Okumai Agim, who used to be my DPP, had just been appointed chief justice. Jamano Bobna Justice Ajim Minga Hamne Mone Konsuma DPP Mujegim Omlain Fal Defco Chief Justice. So I was I first served on the Lands Division in the in the judiciary. Sanjel Benak Magadon in Yengatunaxi Buntu Bise to Miri Sufsile. And later transferred to the Civil and Commercial Divisions. Mujeginang Nyo Tohalmanakti Digantileo Digante Nit Agnit Aglo Ajit Miri Koparile. During that time as well, I was also appointed a project coordinator for the government of the Gambia UNDP program, country program. Jamano bo vitame nak project coordinator la wan li jimsi wali dohali ni ligay UNDP ak nguri Gambia. What's the appointment by virtue of your position as a judge? Lan mo won ta hawai tarna biga hamne mum la jale fiom punga nek atekat. No, that position was by virtue of the fact that I am a seasoned project implementer. As I um, so the the, the 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 CJ wanted me to implement the project, the justice sector project, as I did in the in the Ministry of Justice. If justice when I begin to matter, how long can I have the money to do all the project? Bob, come, you have no lack of the funds to bring it. So um, we had to implement the justice sector project within the judiciary. You have no money to justice project. Bob, you come, no longer work on the do all the judiciary. You want to be said to all the attack. And the justice sector program project was meant to accelerate the, the expeditious disposal of cases and ensure access to justice for all. So with the support of UNDP, we were able to make a lot of um, implement a lot of activities within the judiciary during that period. Uh, um, in addition to, uh, we implemented many activities, but some of the activities include establishing a website for the judiciary. Uh, we, conduct, we conducted a number of training for the judiciary staff, especially the support staff. Because we felt that the support staff were the machine behind the judiciary. And we needed to enhance their capacity. And those support staff include the clerks, the registrars, process server, secretaries, bailiffs. Secretary and bailiffs. Yes, we designed also, we developed also um, operational manual for the Office of the Sheriff. We also um, developed or formulated an operational manual for also the offices of the registrar and the clerks. We um, we refurbished the library and restructured it. We conducted training for judges, magistrates, and cadis. We developed rules of procedure for the for the cadi courts in the cadi court and the cadi appeals panel. All this was meant to ensure access to justice for all. And was it a successful project? Yes, it was. I believe that the rules are still being used in the CADI courts at the CADI appeals panel. We also develop a compendium on all rules relating to Sharia personal law as it relates to marriage, divorce, and inheritance. So these are just a few. I don't want to go into, into details. So I was elevated to the Court of Appeal in 
2012 ci atum 2012 nak ñu dal di ma yokal ma xama yobu ma na ci code bi nga xamne ni ñoy dappel and it's a position i served until i was appointed minister of justice in august 2013 te fofu nak la nek di liggey be ci wéri august biñ ma dal de tan dal di ma rang minister bi seytu walli loi ak atté ci rewmi datum 2013 i served as minister of justice twice nek na nak minister bi seytu walli loi ak atté ci rewmi ñaari yoon between August 2013 and August 2014. Si digante August 2013 ak 2014 August. And uh, again January 2015 and January 2017 when my mandate expired after the government I served lost the election. Si atum tu January 2015 be January 2017 jamono bobu nak suma suma mandat fa la jexe ndax nguur gi nga xamne mom la don liggel ci lañ daanu ci wote bi. As, as as attorney general and minister of justice i was also a cabinet minister comme nak di minister bi seytu won walli loi ak atté ci rewmi bokko na ci pencu minister yi and i was the principal legal advisor for government te teme nak may ki nga xamné ni ma gënu na koy nak lu aju ci walli yedd nak nguur gi my responsibilities included providing advice and policy guidance to government when requested suma sa liggey nak ci suma sas bokku na ci nak di yedde nak lu jëm ci wali sat ak doxalin lu jëm nak ci nguur gi say bo xamé ni ajo nañ ko i was also the head of chambers head of the attorney general's chambers ma jité wi tamen nak chambers attorney general bi and i had oversight responsibility for all the departments department heads té tamen nak suma sas ci tamen dal di wona yaatu be lu aju ci wali ligey kat yep ci buntu bobu sandote yes we shall get into that point okay dinañ ñew dinañ duga ci lolu your appointment is based on a provision in the constitution is that correct yes na yeñ la jël ligey dem dañu sukkande ko ci li nga xamne non la feñe ci loi rewmi wow and if one looks at the wording in the constitution it actually shows the importance of the role of the attorney general te suñu sété cadeau yi niñ ko bindé ci loi rewmi woné na am solo bo xamné am nako solo place attorney general bi yes wow if you do have your constitution with you can we refer to section 71 fekké ya nga amé téré loi bobu nga xamné mom lañu doxé ci rewmi mon nga sét fan na biñu wa section 21 70 yes As yes. you can see, well, it does state that unless an act of the National Assembly otherwise provides, there shall not be more than 15 sectors of state. I believe this was amended in the um, f- further on to say ministers where we have sectors of state. Yes. Including the Attorney General. Yes. Hence seeing that it is only the Attorney General that is specifically named under this section, even though it's talking about other ministries. Yes. This tends to show the important role the Attorney General plays in the state and of, the governance. Of course. Thank you. That's why it's, he's the, the Attorney General is the principal legal advisor. Which just goes to show my point, and which is on the section 72.2, which says that Attorney General shall be the principal legal advisor to the government and shall have the right of audience in all courts in the Gambia. am na fa na bo xamne woné nañ fa nak né ki nga xamne modi attorney general mo mo wara nek ki digal njiti rewmi té it amna doole pour tew ci bép atté kay bo xamne mu ngi ci rewmi yes wow can you tell us the functions that you had when you were the minister di ñu mëna wax nak yi nga xamne mo won sa taxaway jamono yi nga xamé né ya nekkon minister ba yes i was responsible i had two functions amona ñaari liggéey yo xamne rom la daan def because i had two responsib two sets of responsibilities amona ñaari xaj yo xamne ni yeb luma gaddu la won the first is attorney general ben bi moy attorney general legal advisor lawyer di ki nga xamne moy yedd na ci wal loi di lawyer the other is minister of justice benen bi moy nek minister bi seytu wali loi ak atté ci rewmi cabinet cabinet member di ko xamne ni nak bokk na ci pencu minister yi So with regards to the office of the um, Minister of Justice 
bu ñëwé nak ci li nga xamné mu ngi aju ci walé office ministre bi saytu walé loi ak at ci réew mi ministre of justice was responsible for the ministry of justice wa ministre bi saytu walé loi bi nak mom mo saytu nak ministre bi nga xamné ni mo saytu walé loi ak at ci réew mi and that oversees the registrar of company companies now the single windows net registry wa tay tay men nak di baye xelil li nga xamné ni mu ngi aju ci walé niyo bindo mbiri company ci doxalin registrar general's office ak registrar general office bi curator of interstate etc etc ya ke tamen nak lu jëm ci walé digante doxalin ci digante bi rew mi fi minister of justice is also the link between the executive and the judiciary eh minister bi saytu walé atay nak momit moy ki nga xamné ni mo nek ci digante buntu liggey kay ñi nga xamné ño jité ngour gi ak walé até bi so that means any um, bills that any bills that needed to be passed on behalf of the judiciary the minister would move it in parliament because the cj as head of an arm of government that is the judiciary cannot appear before parliament uh, tay tay men nak lepp lo xamne ni mu ngi aju ci wali loi bo xamne ni war nañ koy taxaw rek mom mo koy yobbu ci negi député ndax nak ki nga xamne ni mo nek ci djé bi chief justice bi mu ta dem taxaw fofu and any issue that the cj wants to bring to the attention of government the executive I as the Minister of Justice would present it to cabinet. Uh, tay tay men nak eh, Chief Justice lo xamne ni lolou la bugga aggalé nak eh, pour ngour gi yekko wala khalifa ay eh, nek saytu ngour gi eh, da na wara jaar ci loxo minister bi mu dal di len ko aggé. The minister also had oversight responsible for ability for parastatals like the National Agency for Law for law reporting national agency for legal aid natib national agencies for trafficking in person etc etc ah tay tay men nak ño gaddu tay men lepp lu aju ci wali doxali ni buntu liggey kay yoy nga xamne tuddu na len nga xamne ni buntu liggey kay genn wali ngour ak genn wali sen bop la which also included the adrs and the adrs adrs bokka na ci which is yes. alternative law reform commission etc yeah Um uh, so the that's that's the role of the minister of justice so the attorney general is a lawyer and uh, head of chambers uh ke lolou nak moy liggey minister bi say tu wali loi ak atté attorney general nak nek na nak lawyer be paré té men jité nak chambers bi di buntu atté kay and the chambers consists of lawyers as well uh, té té men lolou bo lé nañ ci bokk na ci nak di ay lawyer yi té men lawyers who prosecute and lawyers who defend the state eh di lawyers yi nga xamne ni ñoy atté ak lawyers yi nga xamne ñoy taxawal ngour gi that's just to name a few lool nak moy pour lim ci yenn rek ci ñom but perhaps this is the point since i'm talking about the role of the attorney general and minister of justice perhaps it's also important to highlight that because the role of the attorney general and minister of justice is a specialized position eh ndegam nak li nga xamne ni moy wali attorney general ak minister of justice nek na lo xamne ni luñ bëra loxala ci wali sen liñ gaddu it only focuses on matters relating to law eh ñom liñ jubal bop rek moy fanay nga xamne depo na ak loi so anything so the minister of justice is the custodian of the laws of the gambia eh te kon nak minister bi saytu wali loi ak atté ci rewmi mom nak ñu moy ki gaddu na lepp lo xamné mu ngi aju ci wali loi yi rewmi everything that is done has to be done in accordance to the laws of the gambia lepp lu ñu def nak fox rek ñu def ko jaarale ko ni nga xamné dal non la depo loi yi gambia which means that matters relating to prosecution arrest and detention is not under the ministry of justice eh lool nak mo melni nak lu jëm ci wali atté ak ni ñuy jappé ak tek mbiri guest lool na nekku ton ci ron ministre bi saytu wali loi ak atté ci réew mi contrary to popular belief it's under the ministry of interior eh ci comme li nga xamé nak mom lañ ko fogué rek né dal mu ngi nekk ci ron ministre bi saytu wali doxali ni bi réew mi You may finish because you're preempting my questions. Oh, <laughs> but you may finish. Sorry. Uh because we're talking about the responsibilities of the Minister of Justice. So, um uh, yes, so with regards to investigation and uh, detention and arrest, that's the job of the police which is under the Minister of Interior. Eh bu ñëwé na ci walli jappu ak walli guestu eh ak walli tek nit ben place lool na liggéey police la té lool nak ño nek ci ron ministre bi saytu walli karangi bi réew mi ak mbiri doxali nak walli police The Minister of Interior is also responsible for the prisons. Uh, ministry bi saytu walli doxali ni bi réew mi di interior ñoomé ño saytu lu jëm ci mbiri kasso yi 
Minister of Justice is not responsible for prisons. Ministry, we say to Wali at the Amudara law, how many more can guard the Wali Kazoi? It's not responsible for the condition, the management, the administration, whatever happens in the prison that's under the purview of the Minister of Interior. Tey tey menak duwa rugalam chile pulo how many mungi ajuti Wali nekin bag dohalin ba akterilin binga how many more nekete Kazoi. Lol mungi nek na chiron Ministry, we say to Wali dohalin akterilin iri nguriumi. I had also. Can I continue? May I continue? Well, you're actually... Sorry, let me slow down. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the education. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. For the public to know. Yes. <laughs> I think we all know those issues according to law. Yes. And according to fact as well. We know that according to law and according to fact, because I was the holder of the Office of Attorney General and Minister of Justice, so I am in the best position to talk about the facts as it is and the law that it, that's it, as it is. However, okay. Ms. Ngate, don't forget this is a commission. Yes, and not a court of law. I and, understand. And it has received different testimonies. I understand. I said that you bury your hand your name coffee. And we have done several investigations. I understand. We and I also evidence. understand. Sorry. We have evidence. Yes. That shows that we had two governments that were running. In this jurisdiction. We had the government where you had Yaya Jame. You had the vice president who was Aisutu Nyai Sedi. For vice president, Bimu Aisutu Nyai Sedi. Then you had the ministries. I'm Frank, I minister. And you had institutions, etc. Akit I lige yukai akiene ni yene chiron. Which is what goes by law. The law lo na chuali luwa nun lai dohe. We also received evidence that said we had another government. I'm nang fi fende itamedi uone ne. I'm na benen gurde. Where you had Yaya Jame as the head. Nga hamne Yaya Jame moko jite. And you had Sol Baji. Nga am Sol Baji. Then you had Marabus. Nga am Serinyi. You had the Jongolas. Nga am Jongolasi. You had the NIA. Nga am NIA. You had certain ministers. Am Nyena, I minister. Etc. Ak Nyena, Nyena, Nyena. I was not going to touch this point now. Duma Rubuga Lal Fufulegi. But you raised it. Waya ko Gunja. This is the evidence we received. Okay, yeah. thank you, Council, for highlighting the evidence you received. But uh, my Jeff, testimony uh, is also evidence. Jeff Council, Chininga Fenyele na Finde Yinga Kamne Nijon Gako. Why not my to my Kadufi, Momita Men Findela? And my own evidence is I am talking about my own experience and what is within my control. And my own evidence is there was a law that we follow and the facts as I know it as I'm going to present it to this commission. I have no control how the commission will receive my evidence, but this is my fact and this is my evidence and I am the one on the oath and I'm the one testifying. The commission will assess the evidence that they receive and the testimony that you give today. Thank you. Okay. Move on with the questions that I have for you. Okay. We will go back to this issue that was raised later on in the day. It is common knowledge. And it is evidence that we have received before this commission. That certain laws were amended and created. And his implementers. Punish persons that he perceived to be his enemies. At this point, I would like you to tell this commission, whilst you were AG, certain laws that were used to prosecute civil servants.
I'm waiting for the question. <laughs> the question was to yeah. tell the Commission about laws that were used to prosecute civil servants whilst you were Attorney General. Okay. Thank you. First, the laws that we use at the Attorney General's chambers are enacted by law. Uh, I don't have any evidence of any law that is used to persecute anybody. There's a rationale and a reasoning for any law that is enacted. So I cannot go into the details between the rationale behind any law. Usually those are provided in the objects and reasons of the bill that is presented by whoever is going to move that bill before Parliament. And when it comes to the making and enactment of laws, Parliament or the National Assembly is responsible for that. When it comes to prosecution, yes, the bills of those laws, where yes. do they emanate from? You tell me, I don't know what laws you're talking about. In general, general from laws. a private member's bill, where else do the laws, the bills, that are enacted, where do they generate from? Bills are, 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 are sponsored by the relevant department head. And by department, I mean the ministry is responsible for that bill. So if it's a finance bill, it comes from Ministry of Finance. The instructions are sent to the Ministry of Justice. To the drafting division. They draft the laws. Based on the instruction of the ministry. And it's sent back to the ministry for them to present in parliament. If it comes, if it's a bill that's from the Ministry of Justice itself, for example, relating to a criminal law, the instructions are given to the drafting division. They would draft a law. And the minister would move the bill. So it depends on the subject matter of the bill that will be handled by the drafting officer. So Thank you, Yes. The laws that I'm referring to are laws that emanated from the Ministry of Justice. Okay. These were laws such as giving false information by a public servant. Negligence of official duties, etc. And I believe one of the most famous ones was the Economic Crime Decree. Those are all lawful laws that are in our laws of the Gambia. I believe earlier on you, you yourself said Sometimes there are reasonings behind the law. Correct. Wow. The evidence that we have received before this commission is that Yaya Jame created laws that would actually punish people that he taught. I need your hamne mumde chia karam. Why not with him? 
and mom. And I have a letter. That has already been exhibited before this commission. That shows that he actually requested by executive directives. For the amendment of certain provisions in the criminal code. And this was to stop whistleblowers. May I see the letter? Mr. Chair, with your permission. Thank you. This is not within my knowledge. Uh, That's why I was not going to show it to you. It, was, it wasn't one when you were a minister. But after this letter, shortly after, you became minister. So this law was in the ministry when you became minister. You're right, because it was already passed in parliament and it was part of the laws of the Gambia. We also receive evidence. As I said earlier, this law was brought in to keep the whistleblowers quiet. And it did that. Because it made a lot of civil servants afraid and refrained from saying anything negative about the runnings of the government of Yaya So if we may now go into my question. Can you please tell us about laws that we use to prosecute civil servants whilst you were in office? Yes, during my time in office, I can assure you that I never used any law to persecute anybody. And I can also tell you that a law, so long as it's valid, it's val a law is valid so long as it's in the law books. Unless it is repealed or declared unconstitutional by the Supreme Court, it's still a valid law. And when it comes to the work of the Ministry of Justice, we are guided by the law. But if I may, um, as a way of providing further information, may I continue? When it comes to prosecution of cases, the Ministry of Justice is responsible for prosecution of cases. But before the cases are prosecuted, the cases are investigated by the police. They're the ones that acquire the evidence. They're the ones that apprehend the suspects. Meaning that means they're the ones who detect the crimes. So they compile their reports and their files which consist of the evidence they acquire and they send it to the minister of Ministry of Justice to the Office of the Director of Public Prosecution. 
upon receipt of that file, Gannaaw buñ joté nak file yoyu the, the DPP has a responsibility to at, to assign it to a state council within his department eh bu ko defé DPP bi nak booba amna sas pour jox nak kenn ci ñi nga xamné ni loyer rew mi lañ nguur gi lañ ci ronam and one of those lawyers would go through the file té kenn nak ci loyer yoyu dana set na file bi and write an opinion eh bu ko defé nak mu bind li nga xamné ni moy xelatam and make recommendations def ay ragné fam as to whether or not to prosecute monam pour dañ ko wara atté wala duñ ko atté if they require further information bu féké nak aajo né yeneni ba taxel ay xibar yu aju ci lolu they will write back to the police to provide that information dana ñu bind nak ci police di sakko ci ñom pour ñu indi len xibar yoyu after the state council writes his or her opinion gannaaw bo xamné state council bi dal dina bind li nga xamné ni mo nek xelatam ci lolu and perhaps he, rep he recommends prosecution for example ak ci santion bu féké nak né na ragné na né ñu wara atté he sends the files back to dpp da fay jël nak file boobu yobbu at ko ci dpp for dpp to approve or not to approve pour dpp bi nak and digeral ko wala ñak ko digeral because that's the prerogative of dpp given his experience ndax lool nak mu ngi def rek ci dpp bi comme ni nga xamne fa la maqamam tollu ak xam xamam we also need to remember that the dpp's office was established by the constitution ñu fatale ko yite melni office du dpp bi constitution di loi rew mi moko taxawal and is support is required to be an experienced competent individual te yite men sakku ne warna nek ni ko xamne ni ku match la ci ligeyam ku am xam xam competent enough to be a high court judge te yite men nek ko xamne ni ku am xam xam la ku match ci ligeyam be wara mana nek atté kat ci atté kay yu gëna ko wé so the dpp will decide whether to prosecute or not or whether to agree with the opinion of lawyer or not e ci ko nak bobu dpp bi dana wara nek ko xamne ni war na xelat ndax mu and ci liñ bind li loya bi wax wala dit usually i don't interfere with the proceedings or the procedure in the dpp's office e ci lool nak duma ci daan dugal suma loxo ci ni nga xamne dal moy aju ci wali doxalin bobu but what happens sometimes is dpp would send the file upstairs way lego nak li xew moy dpp bi da fay jël file indi ko ci kaw may i interject okay You've just told us the constitution and the provision wow. that talks about the DPP isn't that correct? Wow. Yes. Any constitution be ak fi nga xamni fofu la waxe. I think left out an important part in that provision. Am na fan na bu am solo guñ bayyi nak ci bunta bobu. I was coming to that saying that the attorney general has oversight of the DPP's office. It says subject it says that the director of public prosecution shall have subject to the direction or control of the attorney general. So that department is not that it is under your watch. It's under my according, supervision according to the constitution. Right. According to the constitution, but like I said I had also emphasized. But let me allow the interpreter to interpret. Tay tay man fofu nak dal dina fa wéral li tamen né. I had also emphasized the DPP is a expert in his own right. Tay tay man garal na fa né DPP bi dé nek na ko xamné ku match la ci lepp lo xamné mu ngi jëm ci yelle fam ci mbiri loi atté bobu. The constitution the constitution Uh, the constitution expects some form of supervision uh, lua bi nak sentu na ite men yen baye xel wala set lu ligey yi but i am not required as the attorney general and no attorney general is expected to be looking over the shoulder of the dpp micromanaging him te ite men nak nekuma kuñ sakku jour te amul ben attorney general bo xamne ni ite men sasna sasona nak lu jëm ci wali di set e mbagi ki nga xamne moy dpp bi di diko digal ni moy doxale it defeats the whole purpose of professionalism yep nak ñu ko sisale rek ci match ak liggey because if i am a professional in my own right ndax bu fekke nak ne match na ci suma yelef i'm given a responsibility ñu jox ma aw sas and i have the competence to do it and the qualification to do it e match na ak amna xam xam bi pour def ko I definitely do not expect neither would I appreciate anybody to be micromanaging me and telling me how to do my work. Eh kon nak sentu ma ite ite men yakaruma ne dana am kuma ay waxal naka la koy doxale. Thank you. Yes please. But I can continue with procedure because I had actually said that the files are usually sent upstairs and this is where my oversight role comes in. Wa na be legi na man na continue ci ni nga xamne non lañ ñoy doxale na mbiri atté bobu ndax jamono bo eh buñ indi waté file bi fi waat suma waré waré fegné. So when the file comes upstairs by upstairs I mean to my office eh tu ma ni waxé né file buñ ko indé ci kaw moy nak suma office it comes to me through the solicitor general 
the solicitor general be the solicitor general will review the opinion of the council mom nak solicitor general mom dana sel li nga xamne moy xelati council bi review the comments of the dpp sel li nga xamne ni mo nek dpp bi lim ci wax minute on the file by making his recommendations whether he agrees with the dpp's opinion or not mom it bu ko defé nak mo bind nak li nga xamne ni moy xelatam ndax and na ci dpp bi wala diit and then it's brought to my office bu ko defé nak ñu indi ko suma office when it comes to my office bu accès nak suma office sorry i i am looking at the commissioners i don't have a chance to look at you to know whether you want to stop me or not okay. i apologize thank you that's fine so i'm going to pause here until okay. you allow me to continue you and tell you the procedure that was in place whilst I was Minister of Justice and Attorney General. We will get to that. The procedure you have just explained before this commission is what is provided for in the laws. Not necessarily. It not necessarily because it says that usually the minister has oversight but the policy i put in place was to ensure that there was complete check and control it not only comes directly to the minister it goes through the solicitor general so that all the t's are crossed and all the i's are dotted okay. So may my I, role is not Ms. to question missing at it. Yes. If I may guide you. Please. Please. Yes. Okay. Yep. The procedure you have explained should be the norm. That should be the procedure that exists. And that's the case. <laughs> we have evidence that it did happen in certain cases. But in cases that Yaya Jame had interest in, it did not work that way. We okay. have information, but this is my evidence too. May I at least, let me testify, because you're just making statements based on evidence of other people. My evidence is here before you, I'm ready to present it. Allow me to, to, to present my evidence and then you can weigh the evidence you received and the evidence I'm giving to, make your, to reach your conclusion. But if you keep on making statements about the evidence you receive, evidence we receive, and you're not allowing me to make my evidence, then what's the point in calling me to testify? Okay, Ms. Singate, I am putting it to you then. Ms. Singate, At this stage, hamale. I am putting it to you. That that was not the norm when it came to persons of interest to Yaya Jame. We have letters that show that he used to give executive directives to the ministry to prosecute. We have received evidence that in particular cases he would even try to cite the law under which the person should be should be charged. We saw the court system. Please, let's not waste the time of the commission. Let us answer truthfully as it had happened. Council, for you to actually use the word truthfully to somebody who is actually sworn under oath is quite bizarre. <laughs> because I am here under oath, I am presenting my evidence. You have received your evidence. Allow me to tell you what occurred in my office during my time in office. I did listen to you. But I'm not finished yet. I will allow you to finish, but I cannot allow you to finish in totality before I put in my questions. So, as I was saying, so the file comes, through, comes to me through the, uh, the SG. And I would also go through the file. And I would also go through the file. See the reasoning behind the decision to prosecute or not to prosecute. Uh, and then I also would have my opinion. If I disagree with the opinion of DPP, 
sum fekke nak ne anduma ak li nga xamne moy xelati dpp bi which may be in line with the opinion of the sg nga xamne ni ñaare meuna andak li xelati sg bi we would both invite the dpp e bu ba da nañu on ak dpp bi to discuss the rationale behind his conclusion e pour nak ñu waxtane li nga xamne moy dalili lim sotal ci wax jo ci dogal bobu My job or our job is not to convince the DPP to change his mind. It's for him to convince us as to the rationale behind his decision. Because he would get to prosecute that case. He's the one who's responsible for winning or losing it. So he's the one responsible for the outcome of the case. So therefore, he should be in the position to explain whether he, the rationale or the reasoning why he wants to prosecute or not to prosecute the case. Yeah. Mr. Nyate, yes. at this point, I am putting it to you yes. that directions were given to the DPP under your watch as to how to prosecute matters. And we shall get into that after the break. But I would answer it, I am not aware of that. Can you please translate that? I am not aware of that. And I would also like to say with the commission of the chair. Cases before they are prosecuted. There has to be reasonable reason for reasonable reason in law and in fact as to why to prosecute. If no case case can be prosecuted. Come again. Is that the reason why evidence was being fabricated? I am not aware of that. And that's a serious allegation. Yes. Wow. I mean, uh, thank you, Council, and thank you, Madam Singhate. We will um, uh, take a short break and come back at uh, 12.05. Thank Meeting you. Meeting is adjourned. Thank you. Number 
moi United States, so the number be fee, locally fee, the Republican be a fee, moi 3699137. Then I'll get number you the WhatsApp. But when you call, then you am. No, no, regular night. Wow. comes in so many different ways. Our musical matuti, hanging. Wow. Of the Gambia, million cotton mode de Falere, Munion Yoga Chin number ye, who they Gambia feel, call them is three six nine nine one three seven. Who they young United States that call you see three four seven seven three one zero zero seven one. Then I'm the next in contract with DHL, Munga from Neon Believe. Four negative added direct, born in a ring ring, New Jaila, Pagala, the per union of the Akmungino Yombe, Hungary, Fan Neon, Pala, Believe. Number is 347-731-0071, my United States. So the number is locally, the number is 3699137. Then I'll give you a number on WhatsApp. But what do you call when you are? No, no, regular night. Wow. Gambia, Hamina Yabumaling, Hebumaling, Tedumaling Fordor, Mani and Libigi, Han. 